good to see you tonight. Trust you had a great afternoon, maybe got some rest, and glad to see you again tonight. Well, we haven't sung many Christmas hymns as a church family together. We're going to start tonight. Uh, maybe some of you are pretty excited about that. I heard some woohoos from this side of the auditorium. Oh, and this side as well. Uh, maybe some of you don't like Christmas carols. Maybe you're a little bit like Ebenezer Scrooge. I don't know. Um, but we're going to start off tonight by singing some of these Christmas carols. I'm going to give you a chance to look over them because we are going to pick some favorites here tonight and to sing some of these. We're going to sing hymn number 100 to begin with, but our Christmas carols go from around page 83 to page 101. Now, I guess you don't have to technically pick a Christmas carol, but that's kind of the direction we're going tonight. So I would encourage you to pick a Christmas carol from those pages, 83 to 101 that would be preferred and tell you what it's the month of december we haven't done this in a while but if you have a birthday in december how many have a birthday in december anybody miss diane got some back there there you go all right good elena we'll give you first choices all right so you guys be really thinking during this song if you have a christmas carol you like to start off with we can do that but let's turn to hymn number 100 we'll bow for a word of prayer and then we'll stand and then we'll sing hymn number one hundred, O come, all ye faithful. Let's pray. Father, uh, thank you for your word. Thank you for these songs that we can sing to reflect on um, when you did come to this earth the first time. Um, Lord, you did come for a purpose. Sometimes we get caught up in the tranquility of the manger scene in Bethlehem. But Lord, uh, there was a purpose behind that. You didn't just have in mind a manger in Bethlehem. You had in mind a cross in Jerusalem. And, uh, and you had in mind, Lord, a tomb that would be open and you would rise again. So, and for those things, we are very thankful, even during this, during this Christmas time. Uh, Lord, I pray that we'd ever be looking for your second return, uh, your, rather your, the rapture, and then one day, Lord, your second return. I pray that we would be um, telling others about the good news of Christ so that they can uh, anticipate the rapture as well. I bl pray that you bless the rest of the service, that you would get the glory from everything that's done. In Jesus' name, amen. Stand with me, hymn number 100. Let's sing together, O Come All Ye Faithful. singing this evening you may be seated and as you're doing so if you have a favorite and your birthday is in December that was several of you if one of you have a favorite that you'd like to pick we'll sing a verse or two of those songs now there is a standing rule I don't know that I've ever enacted it but if I don't know the hymn 
you get to come up here and sing a solo for us. So just keep that in mind. Um, I don't think I've ever made that rule uh, or, you know, enacted that rule. But if you pick, like, as with gladness, men of old, I don't know if I know that too well. Do I know it? All right. Everybody's telling me that I know it. Right, Apparently. They, so, <laughs> yeah, someone's going to pick that, and they're going to have to come up here and sing it with me. It's all right. All right. Anybody that has a birthday in December, I'd like to pick. If you don't, I'll move on. 94. All right. Miss Diane, she wants to pick 94. Great one. What child is this? Let's sing the first verse of that hymn together. What child is this? Yes, Briella. 85. All right, turn back a few pages. Oh, her birthday was, yes, you know, I saw that. Happy birthday, Briella, or belated birthday. All right, Silent Night, Holy Night. Let's sing on the first verse of hymn number 85. Silent Night. up to anybody all right anybody that would like him are you raising your hand brother dave or are you waving at me okay 83 on live stream she's requesting page 83 we see you miss debbie or brother dave did he relayed the message to me all right let's sing oh come oh come emmanuel That would. <laughs> yes, Elaine, I saw your hand up. 89. All right, just turn a few pages to hymn number 89. Angels, we have heard on high. Let's sing together hymn number 89.
Peyton over here on this side. Yes, Peyton. We'll get to you next time. 87. Is that right? All right. Turn back. 87. Joy to the world. Let's sing hymn number 87. Yes, Brother Randy. Oh, you were going to pick 87. All right, we'll take one more. Yes, uh, Sue. 92. All right, and if you are watching on live stream tonight, I see several of you are logged down there. If you have a favorite, write it in the comment section, and when we come back after the announcements, I'll look those up, and we'll sing some of those here tonight as well. All right, but let's sing number 92, O Little Town of Bethlehem. open we'll be back in just a few moments amen now it feels like christmas amen all right we're ready for christmas now praise the lord amen I'm grateful for the christmas carols and trust that the lord will bless uh, the ministry of music great messages in those songs there so praise the lord okay let me just uh, remind you of a couple things real quick there are envelopes in the foyer and again if you are just joining us tonight uh, talk to me. I don't see Jane here tonight, so talk to me before you just take a box off the table. Uh, some of those boxes are reserved for people that have had that number for years, and so I know where the extras are, and we'll be glad to give those to you, but if you need a box of envelopes uh, by way of your, your uh, generous contributions to the ministry here at Kendall Park, uh, see me afterwards, and we'll take care of that. That would be great. And uh, just remind you, I don't even know, I haven't checked how many calendars are left. Is there another box or so back there? And we'll take a look at that, but use them, get them all, take them all, get rid of them here. That would be great. We don't want them uh, hanging around next month here. So that would be great. Uh, looking forward to our missionaries coming next week. They'll actually arrive uh, Saturday evening, afternoon. Uh, they'll be here Saturday night. Uh, I really appreciate this missionary. He said, we can come earlier if you want us uh, to do some kind of work. Uh, so I thought, man, we should probably paint a building or something like that or whatever. And call that missionary and get him here as early as we can. No, I appreciate that because that really is indicative of a servant. And that's really what we all are to be. Amen. Servants of the Lord. So uh, you may not like painting, but hey, you know what? If that's the job that needs to be done, you're going to paint. Amen. That's what servants do. You do whatever you have to do to, to get the job done. And so I appreciate it, Matt, just offering that. But Lord willing, we'll be here uh, Saturday afternoon and then here all day Sunday, looking forward to his ministry with his wife and family. And then on the 19th, there is a senior ornament swap. That's at 1.30 here at the church in the afternoon. Seniors need to bring an ornament with them. They'll exchange those and enjoy some delicious cookies and have a great time together. And so that's all on the 19th of December. And then we move into uh, a couple other things at that point. We'll have a a morning and afternoon service on the 20th, and we'll say more about that with a lunch in between all of that. So we're going to try to get a little variety here. We don't have any cantatas this year. We don't have any of that stuff really breaking my heart here. Uh, maybe not some of yours. Maybe you like the break a little bit here, but uh, I don't know. I really enjoy the ministry of music and cantatas, uh, so we'll look forward to that again next year, uh, we hope and pray. So maybe the Lord will come back between now and next year, and we'll really be singing with a, a, an incredible choir in glory. Won't that be wonderful? Uh, looking forward to that as well. So I would say even so, come Lord Jesus, that'd be all right with us. And then Christmas Eve service and a few other things coming up. 
Okay, this is officially Philip Smith's last evening with us here. He's flying out Tuesday. I've been saying that for weeks here, but again, I just so appreciate this brother in Christ. I uh, met him in the store. You already heard that story. Uh, pretty clear that this was a believer. He was standing behind me, didn't know the man from Adam, uh, but uh, his greeting said it all, and uh, that just began a relationship. Of course, he was here to take care of his brother Peter, who has been to this church numerous occasions. Um, and I really appreciate him flying down to really spend time with his brother when he had some physical needs and then really to get his house ready for market. And so he's been here away from his wife and family up there in is it British Vancouver, I guess. So uh, that's, uh, that's pretty incredible brotherly love. I'm telling you, I, I might be able to help my brother out for a weekend or so, but man, for months on end, that was really, I think, something special. So certainly... Uh, Let's say our goodbyes to him as he heads out here tonight, and trust the Lord will bless. And hope you come on back. He's from this area. I think your testimony was you were raised in this area, I believe. Uh, or spent uh, Belmead, okay. So you know the area anyway. And and then the Lord took him uh, northwest, and so we're glad to have him back for a little bit. All right, we're going to sing a couple more carols. So I hope you have another one ready to go here. All right, I don't see anybody commenting on Facebook, but if you're watching and you'd like a Christmas carol song, let me know. But who in here would like another favorite from our handbook? I think I already got you, Peyton, but Isla, yes. 83, all right, let's sing hymn number 83. We just sang that a while ago, but we'll sing another verse of it, okay? All right, let's sing, let's sing verse number three. All right, let's sing verse number three of hymn number 83. another Christmas carol favorite. Let's get through everybody one time before I get you twice, all right? Yes. I see that now. It's Leave Thy Throne, hymn number 101 from Mrs. Monday. All right, let's sing together hymn number 101. shall ring when the heaven shall ring and the angels sing and thy coming to victory let thy voice call me home saying yes there is room there is room at my side for thee my heart shall rejoice for Jesus Have another favorite here tonight. I see some ruffling of pages. Miss Laura said 86. All right, let's sing together. Hymn number 86. Away in a manger, no crib or a bed. <laughs> I look down where he lay, the 
love the words of many of our old hymns. They convey such depth of truth. But sometimes, you know, poets um, get a little poetic. <laughs> and they try to use a little bit more poetry than maybe all the truth that maybe we know of. How many of you, uh, when Megan and I were talking about this, that's why I was thinking about this song. We were talking about getting a baby monitor, and we thought, well, the size of our house, we probably don't need a baby monitor. We probably can hear the baby crying. But uh, Away in the Manger says that Jesus didn't cry in Bethlehem. Do you think Jesus cried that first night? Yeah, I, I would think so. I think he was 100% human, 100% God. So I think he, he definitely made some noise uh, when he was born. But I appreciate the poet and how they try to make certain songs poetic. Great song about Christ in the manger. I know a lot of our children will love this song. How about someone else? I have another favorite. Yes, straight back. Hymn number, I'm sorry, say that one more time. 96. All right, every time you would speak, I would speak, ask what you were saying. So 96, all right. Hymn number 96, as with gladness, men of old. All right. All right. She said it's a tune of the doxology, so I, I know that one. All right. As with gladness, men of old, did thy guiding star behold, as with Christmas, and we ought to sing that more often. I think maybe the title scares some of us away. But that's a great hymn. Let's actually sing on that last verse. Holy Jesus, every day keep us in the narrow way. That's a great message right there. Let's sing on that fourth verse. Holy Jesus, every day keep us in the narrow way. And when earthly things are back a few pages to hymn number 91. I was waiting for this one. The first Noel. Let's sing hymn number 91. All right. It must have gotten ripped out of our hymnal up here. <laughs> but we'll get it. <laughs> Let's sing on that first verse. The first Noel. <laughs> Seven, all right, 97, since someone stole yours earlier or borrowed yours, we'll sing number 97. There's a song in the air. There's a star in the sky. Two more Christmas carols. 
Carol favorites here tonight? Yes, Brother Archie. 95. All right, just across the page while shepherds watch their flocks by night. Let's sing hymn number 95. the fifth verse, all glory be to God on high, all glory be to God on high, and to the earth be One more. We'll take one more. If someone's already picked, I think Sue, you have you already picked one? Yes. All right. Let's see if anybody else has one that has not picked. Eighty-eight. Eighty-eight. All right. Eighty-eight. You have to stand up, Mrs. Uh, yeah. Betty says she's got a request. That's right. This one uh, takes a lot out of you in the chorus. All right. If you see those that F there and two of those put together, that means really loud. Okay. So you have to sing this really loud. All right. So let's stand together as we sing in a K. singing this evening you may be seated amen brother amen thank you you know we should have just started 83 and went right to the 101 i think we got them all i think we did it all i like mixing it up though that little variety is good for us here so we got to mix them up and that was good as well so praise the lord amen well i enjoyed that maybe as much as you did so that was a real blessing praise the lord let's take our bibles and turn to the book of ephesians chapter 6 for our concluding study here of this particular book here. We trust that the Lord will help us to finish gracefully and on time here. Uh, we're coming into a season that's going to keep us busy in other areas, and so we trust the Lord will bless uh, this time together here in His Word. Ephesians chapter 6, and we're going to look at verse 18 uh, to the end of the chapter here tonight, Ephesians 6, verse 18 to verse 24. And I'd like to deal with uh, this subject matter, a soldier's prayer life, a soldier's prayer life. The soldier is the Apostle Paul, and we'll see where uh, we would uh, include him in that realm of being a soldier here. So let's, uh, let's ask the Lord's blessing on the ministry of His Word. And then we're going to take up the text that is before us. Uh, Father, thank you. It's been a great night just to be here to sing your praises. 
Again, we are excited. Uh, we love to celebrate the birth of your son, our Savior. So thankful that you sent him into the world. I'm thankful that he was willing to come into this world and, yea, go to a cross and die in our place. He became our substitute. He died for us so that we could live with you. And so we're so grateful for that truth. And we do pray that this Christmas season will be great opportunities for us to really capitalize on and share the good news of Christ's coming, his purpose, his ministry, his death, burial, resurrection, yea, is coming again. Now, Lord, give us the boldness and uh, give us uh, that, uh, that, uh, those opportunities to really share this message. Um, uh, the season affords us the opportunity. I pray we're able to capitalize on it. And Lord, for that, we'll thank you. We're going to thank you, Lord, for our time here tonight, for all that you are going to do yet. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Hey, by the way, uh, I, I shared this with you before in another study of another book, and uh, I may not close out with this study, but you know, when you get down to verse 24, you see where it says, Grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. Amen. Does anybody have another writing, any writing after that as far as where it was written? You have it in your Bible? Some, some people do not have it in their Bibles. Uh, but this, uh, this would be here, it simply says, uh, mine says, written from Rome unto the Ephesians by Tychicus. Does anybody have that written in there, your Bible? So a couple of you, but not all have that. Now, I don't believe that that's part of sacred writ. I think that's just uh, the translators giving us a little bit of help as to uh, where this was written from and uh, who was the messenger to actually carry this letter. Uh, so it's helpful, uh, but I, I thought all Bibles had that, and I... I remember preaching on that one time and found out that that isn't the case. And then sometimes it could be uh, debated as to that little postscript there as to uh, really was this written in this particular town. I think this is pretty clear. It was written in Rome. It's one of the prison epistles. We've already covered some of that. Paul's imprisoned, and uh, he's writing this letter with uh, three others, and uh, Tychicus was the uh, messenger to bring the letter their way. All right. Well, hey, I want to talk about a soldier's prayer life, and uh, Paul is the soldier, and I want you to see that this really is his prayer, and it ought to be the prayer of really all of us, and I think we're all in this army of God. Uh, I would get that from uh, the text here. Remember we looked at back in uh, this, this text here in uh, Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verse 10 and following, where where uh, Paul would uh, tell us these things. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And then he tells us what we're really not wrestling against, flesh and blood, but against principalities, etc. And uh, then he goes on and tells us that we're to put on this whole armor. Why are we to put on the armor? That's because we are in a war. And I preached a message. It was about a month ago. It was a Sunday morning. It was entitled, a Spiritual Warfare. And in that particular message, I reminded you, and we did it, by the way, it was, uh, it was Veterans Day, and so we, we shared that thought on that holiday as we honored those that have uh, given of themselves and their time and energy and their bodies to go and really serve our country. And so that was a, a fitting token to remember our veterans, but as well to look at Scripture and some of the admonition that the Word of God gives us with regard to uh, the warfare that we are engaged in as well. And so in that message a month ago, we looked at the believer's adversary. Very clearly here, verses 10 through 17, that is none other than the devil. And uh, we are very familiar with him, so we're not going to be redundant and go through all of this, but he is uh, the, the lead honcho of this principality and power, the rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places, that's the devil. And and so we, we looked at him. And by the way, we need to know who he is. And we need to know a little bit about his tactics if we're able to overcome him and defeat him. And I also want to remind you uh, that the devil doesn't want us studying him or learning anything about him. He would be very happy for us to be ignorant of, of his deceitfulness and his craftiness. Uh, you know, boy, as I'm just thinking, I think that was the day that that Sunday morning we had all kind of problems going on with our our equipment here. There was all kinds of stuff. And Pastor Josh couldn't figure it out until about halfway through the message. And he then it said, oh, then it dawned on me. Uh, the devil was involved in, in this. He just didn't want us to, to learn about how we can defeat him and learn about uh, uh, his cronies and the, the, the work that they're doing. And so 
Uh, folks, it's a real warfare, so let's not kid ourselves. That's not just, uh, uh, you know, some kind of a Star Wars uh, uh, type teaching. This is, this, there's a real spiritual warfare that's taking place, and it takes place on a regular basis. And so uh, we talked about the adversary. Then we also talked that day about our advice. And the advice, real fast, just by way of reminder, verse 10, be strong. Verse 11, put on. That would be this armor. And then verse 14, stand, therefore having your loins girt about. So that was the, uh, the advice that Paul is giving us with regard to this warfare. And then the armor. And, of course, we're very familiar with the armor. We did not spend tons of time really depicting each of those different pieces, but we did talk a little bit about the armor that day. So we're coming now to verse 18. Uh, we left off in 17, and 18 picks up with these words, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication uh, for all saints. I, I thought it was kind of interesting. Again, uh, the, way, the way God put together Scripture, we don't always necessarily think of that. Like, like I, uh, I shared with you a couple different times, I'm reading through the Bible, and there's a verse in it, in, in my way of understanding, it, it seems like it's maybe out of place, or why is that there? That's, that's the smart approach to Scripture. It's never out of place. It's usually my brain isn't thinking. Uh, and then when you reflect and, and meditate and try to put it all in its context, it really becomes all the more powerful. I say that for this reason. Verse 18, I believe, is strategically, strategically located in the text that comes on the heels of armor that we are to be wearing with regard to this warfare that we are engaged in. And I just want to just share a couple of thoughts with regard to that. You can have the greatest of armor and the sharpest of swords, but if there is no prayer, there is no power. If there is no prayer, there is no victory. You can have all the armor, and it can, be, it can be made of phenomenal material, and it can be all in place, and you can know the Word of God from cover to cover. But if you're not communicating with the God of the Word, you have really no power going into this battle. So verse 18 is located here for good reason. In fact, I'd like to submit to you, it really could be the belt buckle that holds all of this armor together. Uh, I understand that there is uh, the loins girt about with truth, but I would, I would submit to this, that, that this could really be this, this most important piece that brings all of this text here in verses 10 through uh, this uh, verse 18 or verse uh, 20 together here. No matter how complete the armor, no matter how skilled we may be in the science of warfare, no matter how courageous we may be, we can be certain of this. No prayer, you're going to be defeated. You're going to lose. You're coming out on the wrong end of things. Again, so, so you could have studied the enemy and know all about Satan. You could dissect those pieces of armor and preach a message on each one of them. I've done that before. So, so you, could, you could study that. Again, you can memorize the book and know the book through and through. But you are powerless if there is no prayer in your life. That is huge. That is huge for our understanding. And so I would hope that that would sink in uh, to our thinking here tonight. God alone gives us the victory. It's not how well we are equipped, although I believe we ought to have this equipment because God provides it for us. But God alone provides this victory for us. When the Christian soldier goes forth armed completely, for the spiritual conflict that we are engaged in on a daily basis, if he looks to God by prayer, listen to this, folks, you can mark it down, you will be triumphant. Hey, listen, I don't know about you, but I like to come out on the winning side of things. I don't like to lose. And so, uh, so if I want to win, I certainly need to have this armor, and I need to have my sword ready to go. But most importantly, I need to be... I need to be in the presence of the Lord, pouring out my heart. I need to be communing with the God of heaven. And if I'm not, I'm going to be defeated at the end of that battle. Prayer is indispensable. I, I can't emphasize it enough. It's indispensable. And we could preach a whole message on prayer. In fact, I am going to spend most of the message tonight on verse 18 here uh, as we're doing. But, you know, we all know about prayer. 
And again, the, the, if, the problem with we as Christians is not knowledge. We know what we need to do. And we could read, we could read uh, tons of books on prayer and how to do it better. The problem is just doing it. We just need to spend more time in the presence of the Lord by way of the ministry of prayer. And uh, it, is, it is so crucial that we do that. Uh, and I will tell you that I believe with all of my heart the devil will probably fight you the most when it comes time to you getting on your knees before God and talking with him. He will fight you the most. You, again, you can read the word, and the word of God is very easy because that's God speaking to you. But now you and I need to speak back to God. That's prayer. And that's where the devil will bring all that he can uh, our way to just disrupt or destroy that quality time that we desperately need with the Lord by way of the ministry of prayer. Somebody has said this, Satan trembles when he sees the weakest saints upon his knees. I like that. We are weak. We are vulnerable. Uh, we are susceptible to the enemy. But when we're on our knees, we can be strong. In fact, one, uh, somebody else said this, one is never so tall as when he is on his knees. And therein lies the power to victory. And so I hope to God that you and I will will certainly heed the admonition here that, that Paul and the Holy Spirit give us here in verse 18 of this text. Now let's go back and just kind of look at it a little bit further here. The Bible says, praying always. Now I want you to note this word all really appears four times in this verse here. The first is this word always. In the original language, it means at all times. So there would be the first time that the word all appears. We have it translated always, but you could also say praying at all times. Now look at this. With all prayer, circle it for the second time, and supplication in the spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Uh, there, there's a lot in that word all, and it's mentioned some four times here. Praying at all times with this kind of prayer and supplication in the spirit. So let's take it apart a little bit further. With all prayer and supplication. What is prayer and what is supplication? Uh, prayer is, uh, in, in my understanding, would be a, a general way of communicating with God. It's simply addressing God. It's talking to God about various needs, concerns, Oh, there's different kinds of uh, prayer. You can get into praise. You can get into prayer of confession. You can get into all kinds of prayers. But prayer in general would be just communicating with God, sharing your heart with God. Supplication seems to take it to a little bit different level. And again, we may be splitting hairs, but, but it's a different word. So, so God obviously gave us this word. And the idea of supplication would be that which is a little bit more urgent, that which is a little bit more... Uh, important to you, something that you would find yourself praying for often. Uh, prayers, again, general, but boy, here's something that's near and dear to the heart, and you're supplicating. You're giving this to the Lord on a regular basis. This would be something that is earnest, affectionate. Uh, this is something that you continue to, to bring before the Lord. Somebody said, prayer asks, supplication urges, and then re-urges the petition. That would be prayer and supplication. And the Bible would say here in this text here that we are to do it with all prayer and supplication. How exactly are we to pray? Well, we're to pray in the Spirit. In the Spirit would be with the aid or the assistance of the Spirit. Now, let me just ask you this. Do you think you need the Holy Spirit of God to help you pray? You do need the Holy Spirit. I need the Holy Spirit of God to pray. You know why? Because there are sometimes we just don't know how to pray. Sometimes we pray in ignorance about a particular issue. Sometimes we pray for selfish reasons, and I don't want to do that either. And so I need to pray in the Spirit. I need to pray begging and asking for the help of the Holy Spirit in my prayer life. The Bible tells us in the book of Romans, chapter 8, you're familiar with the text, no doubt. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, our weaknesses, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Then it goes on and says, And he, that's God, that searcheth the hearts, knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. Why would God know the mind of the Spirit? They are two persons of the triune Godhead. They are co-equal, co-eternal, 
co-powerful. They know each other very well. God that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the Spirit. And then he goes on and says, because he, the Holy Spirit, maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. I'm happy that when we go to prayer, we can pray at all times in prayer and supplication in the Spirit. I'm thankful for the Spirit of God. Then he would go on and tell us in this verse here, and watching. What is watching? Watching, again, has this idea that we really need to be on guard. How many times have you tried to pray when you are tired? Um, many a time, uh, just by the little bit I've heard. We've all been there. Worst time to try to do your praying is before you go to bed at night. Uh, you are ready to crawl in bed and call it a day. And uh, your prayer life is going to be nominal at best, if, if that is the case here. We need to be watching against drowsiness and mind wandering and preoccupation with other things. Like I said, during that time when you and I are communing with the Lord, there are going to be a lot of things that are going to bombard us and certainly distract us and even wear us out, maybe because of the length of the day and all the busyness of the day. But the soldier of Christ, he must be vigilant. Uh, we would not be good soldiers if, we are, if we're out doing our duty, as it were, and we're tired and weary and worn. And think, well, it won't hurt just to sleep for a couple minutes to get refreshed here. No, we must be on guard. We must be watching. Prayer requires spiritual keenness, alertness, concentration. Maybe it's because of some of those things that we don't do it as often as we have to. I don't know about you, but I want to tell you something. When I pick up this book here to read, it is easy for me to read the Word of God and have God speak to me. It really is. It, it's enjoyable. It's, it's educational. I learn about God. I learn about myself. I see things in this. It's very easy. But when I go to prayer, I really have to discipline myself to stay focused on what it is that I want to talk about with God. And again, it's, it's easy to take that mind and go in different directions. And that's where I really believe that, hey, we need to be praying in the Spirit, but we need to be on guard. We need to be watching as well. And if we're not watching again, we will fall prey to very shallow prayer life. The Bible would tell us, by way of the words of the Lord Jesus himself, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. Hey, the Spirit indeed is willing you know what's the problem, though? It's the flesh that is weak. It is the flesh. And uh, that's where we all fall, again, pray to this whole idea. Now he goes on and says, not only are we to pray in the Spirit watching, but he'll also tell us in this particular text here that we are to uh, therefore or thereunto with all perseverance and supplication. What's perseverance? Perseverance is the idea of persisting. You don't quit. Um, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, you might say, you, you know, you're tired. I want to encourage you, if you're tired, just keep praying. Pray through it. Um, and, and if you find yourself in a pattern that's not very successful, then, then change your habits. Find a better time of the day to commune with the Lord. And oftentimes the morning is probably the best because you're the freshest, your mind is keen, ready to go. But we need to be praying with all persistence. We need to ask God and continue to ask God. You know, a lot of times we quit before we really see God do something great. I love the text. It's found in the Gospel of Matthew. It's also found in Luke where the Bible says, the Lord uh, Jesus tells us, And I say unto you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Remember how that's written in the original language? Ask, and keep on asking. Seek, and keep on seeking. Knock, and don't stop knocking. Sometimes we knock or we ask, and we may do it for a period of time, but we don't see results. We don't see God just kind of jumping or jump, uh, jumping on our bandwagon and marching to the beat of our drum. And, and so we kind of get weary and worn and run down. And no, I, need, I believe we need to pray with perseverance. We need to, again, continue to pray. I like the parable that the Lord Jesus gives us in Luke 18. Where, uh, where, the, where he concludes that story of the unjust judge with this widow woman who would not quit. And God says this, the Lord Jesus says, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, 
though he bear long with them, I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. God wants to hear from us. And, uh, and, and by the way, don't think that your prayer requests have to be for something uh, of, of uh, a, a huge uh, issue. Uh, hey, I just want to be the man that God wants me to be. Uh, and I am weak and vulnerable, and, and, uh, and so, Lord, I, I, I want to have this armor on. I want to, I want to, I want to live today for the glory of your name. Uh, I need wisdom as I go throughout my life, and, and that's just your regular prayer life. And so I would hope and pray that you and I would pray with persistence. Don't become discouraged or disheartened because your prayers are not heard or answered, I should say answered immediately. You know, I've told stories about uh, individuals that I've read, and I don't, I don't, can't give you the names of, of them, but I can, I can find it, I'm sure, no doubt, pretty easily. Or individuals that prayed for a loved one to come to Christ, and they prayed their whole life, their whole life. Maybe it was a son, maybe it was a daughter, and they prayed, and they asked God, and they continued to ask God, "Oh God, I beg of you, save their soul." And, and it was, it was, it was earnest, it was sincere, it was genuine. They were truly concerned about where this individual is going to spend all their days and they died and never saw their loved one get saved but shortly thereafter maybe it was at the funeral or maybe it was months or years later that individual came to Christ hey God hears the problem is never with God the problem is with us we're not as persistent as we should be and uh and I appreciated that saint of old who who wouldn't give up he didn't get to see the fruit of his labor at least not in this world, but no doubt he'll have all of eternity to bask in, in the presence of the Lord with this loved one of his at his side. All supplication, again, that's this idea of urging and re-urging the petition. So again, just so far, pray at all times. Pray always, with all prayer and supplication. Pray in the Spirit. Pray watching. Pray watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication. Here it is, for all saints. Saints here is the object of this prayer here. We're to be praying for saints. Now, Paul is really, I believe, burdened for his fellow believers. Um, uh, he's, he's concerned about these individuals. He realizes that, that Paul is not in this battle alone. If you name the name of Christ, you have been, you, you have been en, uh, enlisted, uh, in, or I should say even drafted, into the army of God. And again, you may not have known that or understood that at the day that you came to Christ, but you were automatically put into this army uh, of God. Therefore, as Paul addresses saints, I, I don't think we're doing a, a disservice to the Word of God to understand that these saints are soldiers, uh, that, they, that they are likewise engaged in this battle. And so his desire would be that, that these fellow believers, fellow saints, fellow soldiers would certainly heed the admonition of verse 18. Satan's spiritual warfare is against Christ and all of his saints, and it is real, and it is intense. Let me just share with you uh, one of my concerns if President-elect Biden becomes the President of the United States, uh, is inaugurated here in January. One of my concerns would be uh, dealing with the suppressive, I'm sorry, repressive regimes that are in the world today. China, Iraq, I'm sorry, Iran, and North Korea in particular. And then there would be a number of others, uh, even some of the, uh, the Nigeria and Africa. Do you realize that there are a host of persecuted Christians and, and people of other faith in these lands that are really being... Uh, oppressed uh, by these, these harsh regimes, the, the cruel treatment. And uh, I'm not saying that President Trump was able to free these individuals, but here's what I do know. Uh, people, my, my understanding, around the world, global leaders, China, North Korea, I, I don't think they had a real fond liking of President Trump. Uh, but I think they had a very healthy respect of him. I, I'd like to believe that. I, I think they had a respect that we need to be careful because I don't know what that guy's going to do over there in Washington, D.C. They didn't know what he was going to do. And so that healthy respect keeps things in check. 
And uh, had he been given more time, four more years, if he were to be reelected, I, I don't know if he could do anything for some of these people that are so oppressed in some of these other lands. But I'm concerned that the new regime may go soft on that, and then the status quo will continue as is in these oppressive lands. And so I, I'm really concerned because uh, I think human rights is a, a huge issue that, that isn't often addressed in our world today. In fact, even in the political debates, they never got to international affairs and debates and, uh, and, and discussions of that matter, uh, and it was, it was very limited. And I really think it was really a disservice to our people because uh, there's a lot of injustices. And I'm not saying that the United States is to be the policeman of the world and set all people free. But I do know that, that uh, old Teddy Roosevelt's uh, philosophy I, I, I love, walk softly, carry a big stick. And uh, don't mess with that guy in D.C. And if, uh, if he's saying we're not going to trade with you because of some of the oppression of your people and the way you treat your people, uh, I, I would like to believe that that might have had some kind of impact long term. I don't know. It, it, it doesn't look like it's going to take place at this point in time. But that would just be this whole idea of, of praying for the saints. Because there is a warfare. In fact, my last note with regard to that, when you and I retire at the end of this day, we go to bed, we lay our head on that pillow, and we're ready to call it a day. I, 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 I want to encourage you to just give thought. Give thought to some of the Christians that are being kept awake tonight at the prospect of death. They're passing through a dark valley. They are in troubled times. We don't know anything about that, folks. We are, we are blessed beyond measure here in America. We, we, we have an incredible life that we live here. But that's not the way it is around the world. And so I think it would behoove us, like, like Paul is admonishing us to do this, Verse 18, pray at all times. Will you do this? Pray at all times with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Not just yourself, for all saints. You and I have it made in the shade here in America, but that's not the case around the world. And uh, I would hope and pray that God would help us to be much like a Paul, yea, even a Samuel. A Samuel where Samuel would tell us, moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you. Hey, God forbid that I would cease to pray for the forgotten soldiers of Christ that are around the world that are being persecuted for, for the cause of our, our Savior. And I confess, I don't pray. Rarely have I thought of that until this message uh, came together here. So I want to tell you this, folks. A soldier's prayer life, I really believe it involves his burden for fellow soldiers. And fellow soldiers, fellow saints, something along those lines. But also, it involves his boldness for his speaking. Look at verses 19 and 20 quickly here. We're going to run out of time, but the Bible says this, and for me, now Paul's bringing himself into this prayer, that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Real quick, I really believe that a soldier's prayer is that God would give us boldness to proclaim, to speak out the wonderful truths of God's Word. Please note this. Paul was not asking to be released from prison. That wasn't his prayer request here. He wasn't asking for some kind of physical comfort in the midst of the confines in which he found himself. He was not asking for his chains to be removed. You know what Paul is asking for? That in the midst of an ugly situation, God, give me boldness that I can proclaim the mystery of the gospel. That I can tell others that, hey, listen, that which was hid from ages past has now been revealed. Jesus Christ has come into the world to save men from their sins. And I, I want to capitalize on the opportunities I have, whether it be in Rome or wherever I find myself. I, I appreciate that, folks, because, I, again... Just look at your own prayer life tonight. So much of our prayer life is consumed about us. And Paul is saying, no, listen, I'm praying that God gives me boldness. There are souls to be won to Christ. And, and if I don't share the gospel, who will? And so, Lord, give me that boldness as I go 
uh, looking to preach the gospel. He says in verse 20, I am an ambassador in bonds. And you know what an ambassador is. One who is sent to a foreign country to represent his sovereign's interest. Paul realized that this country, this world in which he lived was not his home. I've been sent from the Father above. I'm on foreign territory, but I have my sovereign's interest in mind. I have a job to do. He sent me into this world to preach Christ, crucified, buried, risen, and coming again. Hey, a soldier's prayer life involves his burden for fellow soldiers, his boldness in speaking out on the truth. Yea, I believe even in briefing the, uh, his, his people for security purposes. Look quickly here at verses 21 and 22. But that ye may know my affairs. This is, uh, Paul is concluding this letter, and he said, I want you to know what's going on and how I do. Tychicus, uh, beloved brethren and faithful minister in the Lord, shall make known to you all things, whom I have sent unto you for the same purpose, that ye may know our affairs, and that ye might have comfort, uh, that ye, he might comfort your hearts. I really believe that... Uh, that uh, Tychicus was the messenger bringing this, this, this word, this good news to the believers there at Ephesus to certainly say, hey, listen, uh, things are well with the Apostle Paul. By the way, they loved Paul. He spent three years of his life, longest time in one place for Paul. He spent three years of his life ministering to these people, so there was a, there was a fond affection for this dear brother. And so, hey, listen, go put their mind at ease. All is well. Yes, I may be in prison, but hey, God is in charge. He, he's got it all under control. Nothing to worry about, believers there at Ephesus. It's, in, it's all is good. And comfort. Bring some comfort to the, uh, the brethren. And again, I believe that uh, Paul was uh, successful in doing that. You, had a, you put yourself in the position of being the, one of the believers at Ephesus and receiving this good news. And it was like, oh, breath of fresh air. Okay, after reading these six chapters, wow, phenomenal things are going on and phenomenal things I have uh, because of Christ. Elaborate more on that, but closing here, I want you to know that a soldier's prayer also involves his blessing for steadfastness. And I want you to see this in 23 and 24 quickly. He would say, peace to the brethren. And uh, the latter part, uh, he, verse 24, I want you to see, grace be with all them that love our Lord Jesus Christ. So he's addressing these brothers in Christ, and he's admonishing them or asking that they would understand something about peace, love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, as well as grace. And so I really see some of these areas, peace. Peace would strengthen the brethren. Peace would, again, bring great comfort to these individuals. We talked about a little bit of that this morning. Peace is not the absence of conflict, but the presence of the Lord. Peace to you, brethren. I want you to know, even in the midst of conflict, whether it's me here in Rome or whatever you're going to experience in Rome, hey, peace be unto you. Then he says, love with faith. Love, the idea that that would enable them to worship God as well as, again, to love one another. You know, it's easy to love God, but it's sometimes hard to love one another. And yet, by this shall all men know that we are his disciples, if we genuinely care one for another, and we're willing to sacrifice on behalf of those. Why? Because we value the brethren in Christ. And so we're to love. But it says, love with faith. Faith empowers them for the exploits in their Christian warfare. But love with faith is kind of interesting. It's, a, it's an interesting tie where they're united together. Uh, love with faith. They're, they're working together, as it were. If I took time, I would go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and I'd love to share a lot of it, but let me just give you the gist of it. You know this. Paul would write, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And I could read several of these verses. And Paul is saying there to the church at Corinth, Hey, listen, uh, I, I, may, I may be a, a phenomenal orator. Uh, I may, I may uh, sound angelic. I mean, have all this kind of... But if there's no love, to what avail? And you can read this one after another. So here's love, and he's going to couple it with faith. And he's going to say this love and faith, uh, love with faith is what you need to have. And you're going to find the source of these from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, they are, again, co-equal in their personhood. And he closes with this word grace. Uh, I, I desire that you have this unmerited favor of God that it would be with all of them that love our Lord Jesus Christ in sincerity. And this idea of sincerity is that it is without corruption. 
It is unending existence. It is not the word that really has this idea of without wax. It's a different word here, sincerity. There's a lot of different words for sincerity I learned in this study. But I want you again to, to have this peace and love with faith and grace be with all of them that love our G Lord Jesus Christ uh, with, uh, with an unending existence without corruption. Uh, true Christian love would have this quality of permanence. Our flame may flicker. It may even grow low at times. But our love for Christ and his people should never be extinguished. May it be sincere. What a great way to finish his, uh, his admonition here in this chapter. And so I close with this. The Roman prison has long since given up its noble inmate. The great apostle has entered into his reward and has seen the face of his beloved. But this letter, this letter to the Ephesians is still with us. It's as fresh and alive today as it was when it came from the heart and the pen of the Apostle Paul. This epistle, the penman has been promoted, but the book stands. We can read it and reread it again and again, and it still will speak to us words of instruction, inspiration, conviction, and exhortation. Folks, we are wealthy, wealthy believers in Christ. Go back and read about our wealth in Christ in the early chapters of this book. Remind yourself of what you and I have in the Lord. And then see your responsibility as one who has been blessed. And I trust that with all these spiritual blessings in heavenly places, we will flesh out the truths that we've learned from the first three chapters as is recorded in the last three chapters uh, by way of, again, our responsibility. May God add his blessing to the reading, to the study of the precious book of Ephesians. I hope it's been a blessing to you. I know it has been to me, and I trust that we'll uh, visit it often in our travel with the Lord. Amen and amen. Let's pray. Father, thankful for our time here tonight. Thank you, Lord, for this soldier's prayer. The Apostle Paul loved the brethren. He was concerned for the saints. They were separated by many miles, but, Lord, they were never separated from you. And Paul continued to remind himself, as well as these loved ones of his, that, that, uh, that he's praying for them, and they ought to be praying as well, one for another. And I pray that we would be that kind of an individual as well, that kind of a soldier. We love to study the armor, love to study the book, sharpen our sword. But I pray, Father, that the admonition we hear loud and clear tonight is that we need to be people of prayer. And so I pray you impress upon our hearts uh, the, the significance, the importance of finding victory over the enemy uh, found in the time that we spend, the quality of time that we spend in your presence. Help us to be people of prayer. And Lord, for that, we'll certainly give you the praise. We'll give you the thanks. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to close our service tonight by taking our hymn books and turning to hymn number 403, Soldiers of Christ Arise. We'll sing verses 1 and 3. And I know we sang this here. I think, uh, no, we didn't sing this one. We sang a different one, I believe. I think we did. Or was this the same one? Hey, you remind me. I can't. I was looking over and Soldiers of Christ, and maybe this is the same one. Anyway, we're going to sing two verses over here. Somewhere. Stand together. I think we did sing it a couple weeks ago, but a fitting song to close us tonight. Hymn number 403. We'll sing the first and the last verse. Soldiers of Christ are rise and put your armor on. Strong in the strength and spots of Christ through his eternal son. Strong in the Lord of hosts and in his mighty power. Strength of 
thank you for being here tonight. It's been good to go through that series in the book of Ephesians, 12 months, 12 months through the book of Ephesians, um, doing some work on outlining a book of the Bible myself, and I was looking at that, those five chapters of First Peter, and I was thinking 12 weeks um, for myself. I just don't have that much to say as a 23-year-old, so or 24-year-old, and uh, as a pastor has a couple more years and minister on the bell. He has a lot more to say, a lot more good stuff to give to us. But I'm thinking 12 weeks. I was just online this week, totally off topic. Um, but I was online this week, and uh, a pastor was preaching through a New Testament book. He, he wrote on, I think it was on Twitter, that he was preaching his final message of this series of a New Testament epistle. I can't remember which one it was. But he said it took him 20 years, 20 years at his church going through one book. And uh, I thought to pastors Sunday night series that I'm grateful for 12 months. I've gotten a lot out of 12 months, um, but I'm sure he could stretch it out to 20 years if he if he needed to. Yeah, he did. So got a lot of meat out of that. So I appreciate appreciate the good preaching that we have here in our local church. I hope you're thankful for the church that you're a part of and the solid biblical truth that you get. And um, I'm blessed to be here as well. Let's bow for a word of prayer and then we'll be dismissed here tonight. Father, thank you for your word. Um, Lord, you told um, Timothy to not forsake doctrine, um, where it seems like entertainment is put first in a lot of modern churches today, and doctrine is put in the corner. I, I'm thankful for a church that um, really prioritizes doctrine, uh, prioritize, prioritizes your word, and I pray that we'd never fail from that in the years going forward. I pray, Lord, that you'd help our people to grow in doctrine, grow in truth, grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior. It would grow in grace as well, and I pray that you would help us to be a light in our community even this week, and uh, bring us back again on Wednesday night and the following Sunday as we gather together to worship you. These things we pray in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You're dismissed tonight.